um, for the Prince of Storytellers, also a great singer, Mick Quinn. Yeah.
Unless by chance you follow me, I'll swear by my right hand that McDonald's face you'll never see a flower of Sweet morn waters blow, and likewise to my brown haired girl, since I from her must go. My boat is bound for Liverpool, out by the Isle of Man. So I'll say farewell and God bless you, my flower. sheep away up on the side of Slave Gullion Mountain and I had a lovely sheep dog. And the sheep dog and me I had an old van and we'd get into the van and go up the mountain as far as we could, round up the sheep and do what we had to do there and then come back down again. There was a little stream going by and I would go in and wash the welling tongs and the dog would come in along with me and wash the feet and that kept down rows at home when we went back. <laughs> and that went on for years till there was a house for sale <coughs> up beside me. And we were wondering who would come in, would buy the house and what type of neighbourhood. So eventually it was this man from the town over near where I live called the town of Newry. Some of you might know it and some of you don't. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what he is known. <laughs> because uh, the Newry man, or the town, I don't know what the town. <laughs> the newly man, he's that type of a man. He knows everything. No matter what you come up with, he knows. They call him the newly nook. <laughs> the newly woman is the loveliest woman that ever you met. And I often wonder how they were able to stick the men and them. <laughs> but that's a, a boy from newly bought the house and moved in himself and his lovely wee woman and a purebred Labrador with all oh, beauty, a shine at what you could have gave good luck. And um, so it was the thing to do to go and welcome the man whenever he arrived and so I went over and shook hands with him and hoped that he'd live long and day happy. I regretted as many as a time at him. <laughs> <laughs> and the lovely wee woman and the way we welcome women into Mullaban, you just throw your arm <laughs> and give them a big hug on. If the legs had been tightened in on them, they don't like to stand back in. But you get the hug in. <laughs> and uh, that's what I got. And the dog was sitting beside me, looking, oh, he was a very smart dog now, no doubt about it, and a good dog. He was looking at me, and I suppose when he saw me welcoming the woman, he thought it was the right thing for you to <laughs> way round the back and welcome the lovely <laughs> <laughs> Which he did. <laughs> But as far as I know, he went a wee bit further with the bit of <laughs> <laughs> I suppose he had no way of it. <laughs> and when the boy found out what happened, but before he had really got to know me, took out the phone and put two shots in me lovely sheep. And I don't know, I'm sure there's a lot of people here had doubts. There's nothing is, 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 is that you get attached to so much of the dog. I'm surely a good dog is working for you. He didn't die, but he was there for three months and he wasn't able, he was just laying there and 
I was working that much with animals all my life and I went a few times to the vet and I hadn't got the penis in them and I just walked on them myself and everyone said, he's dead. The lead will go to his kidneys and his liver and it'll kill him and he'll die in about three months. But I had him on his feet in three months. <coughs> and he lived to be 17 years of age. I think the shooting down him away. I think it happened. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was there, I was for three months and no doubt to round up my sheep. And I had a great neighbour that and my next door neighbour, I'm sure you knew him, the great and the late John Campbell. And John was a sheep man and had a sheep dog too. And the sheep dog that he had at that time, he was saying to me, You take that dog and, and she, she, she wouldn't walk for John. I'm sure she wouldn't walk for John. <laughs> <laughs> I had a young fella that time called Michal and he had to do the dog for me for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't work, he didn't. <laughs> John was walking round on the road and he was saying, those great poets in, in South Armagh long ago, and if, they, if anyone done anything on them, they would write a poem about them or a song about them, and he was walking round on the road. I think I can see him yet. <laughs> and he'd finish off the damn man that shot the devil. And it got into my head like a good song that you hear at a weekend there, and I couldn't get it out of it. And I never had done much writing, so eventually I got down the pain because I was full of badness and I had to get rid of it or I do have. <laughs> and this is the other location. I hope I can give me another thing about it. If I had to tell the story, I never mind. <laughs> I was born a collie sheep dog with a white ring round my neck. And for nine days my eyes was closed and I couldn't see a speck. I had four lovely sisters, me being an only boy. And for six weeks we played around, me mother's pride and joy. Tell a gentleman from Mullaban to me a leg and two. Held me in his arms, then me master handy shoe. Put me in the motor car and we started for the road. And in less than twenty minutes I was in me new boat. For the first thing my new family did was look for me a name. And they called me this and they called me that. Sure, it sounded all the same, till me master, he came round the house, and this to me he said, Consider now yourself a dog, and sport your name is net. Now my one great distinction was, I had a bunty tail, and I wagged it for me master as we walked o'er hill and dale, and we rounded sheep and cattle, and sometimes the nanny goat, and me master often threatened that he cut me, <laughs> well, the months went by, and I grew up, and I learned to do me chores, and growled at postmen and soldiers, uh, like boys the man next door. <coughs> they loved to see me walk, they said I was a treat, and before I got into the camp, I always washed me feet. But sometimes dogs grow lonesome, and I long to have a pal. And I met a great big Labrador, and she said her name was Sal. And she said that she was lonesome too, that she had a pedigree. I says, that ain't a problem, Sal. You just lay back and eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, when me master he did hear the news and found out what her I slept. <laughs> We didn't use protection, <laughs> so it across the fence he left. Hey, and you have bunty tail, the blacks. So and so from me, Anton Conway Park, I stopped her gallivanting around my house after dark, with his gun up to his shoulder, I carefully me took, and the noise that came out of it was a valley round the chook, and I felt behind the barn, and as the bullet tore me head, and the woman says, he shot that dog to be long to make his head. Well, when me master he did hear the shot, <coughs> and it happened just below, he stepped up to the gun man, and he said, Yenurino! <laughs> then he let him have the one, two, three, up in the old fizzle, saying that's the medicine I'd dish out till any man would shoot my dog. Well, he brought me to my kennel, and now on the straw I lay, and I hear the neighbours asking, with poor Ned live or dead. And I'm getting great attention when me body's full of lead. And for the first time in my life, I get me back for tears in bed. But me master's all forlorn. 
as he sips and strokes me head and he's searching round me body for those little balls of lead and he's using awful language as he sits <coughs> there on the log and these are some of the things that he says about that man, the chatty stuff. Me scabs, the crabs, grow up in flabs around every thing that he feels. <laughs> and snutters flow down to his tongue and hacks from on his teeth. <laughs> may his hair fall out and may his woman pout and may his fart smell like a hawk. <laughs> May the devils look for on that mewing of that man the child. May piles surround his big backside like strawberries on their stock. And every time that he lifts that gun, that his stomach it may bog, and as he goes a hunting over heather hills or bog, may the diarrhea escape <laughs> with all his mouth from that man. <laughs> but to conclude, <laughs> I am on all fours once more. <coughs> And I feel that old coming over <coughs> that did one day before. So I'll slip out some dark evening in the midst of the thick fog, and I'll leave another half a dozen pups with the man to jump. <laughs> <laughs>